Right. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to a new week. Uh, let's begin this time with a word of prayer. Then we'll begin with our session. Yes. Can any one of us please lead in prayer? Go ahead. Anyone can lead. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you under the name of Jesus. We thank you for this beautiful day and for the class we are about to have. God, we pray that as we learn, uh, we take every single word into our heart. We treasure each and every word that Pastor preaches to us. And we take it deep in our heart and we will put it uh, in our efforts. We will put it in our action, Jesus. God, I pray for all my classmates who are about to join. God, I pray for good Wi-Fi connection throughout the sessions. I pray that you will bring them to the class at the right time. I pray that uh, this class will be a blessing to everyone who hears. I give Pastor Paul into your hands. Be his strength and guidance throughout the session. Help us to open our heart and mind and listen to you, Jesus. Your word is life and we are so thankful and we love you in jesus name i pray amen amen, amen. right thank you so much jeffina all right so uh we, we moved into chapter two last week and we talked about um you know the gr grace and the gifts that god has given us uh we talked about how to get started in our plan uh we pray we listen to god <clears throat> and we step out right it's not only about praying listening to god and you know not doing anything about it but we need to step out uh then we look at knocking for doors meaning knocking for opportunities uh god may open doors god may shut doors uh and when he opens doors get into those doors uh with confidence uh don't be discouraged if doors are closed maybe that's not the right door uh that is open <clears throat> and so we also looked at uh, even as you plan and prepare for what God has for you, uh, expect the unusual favor of God. So uh, you've got your plan, you're praying, you're hearing from God, you're waiting, you're expecting God to move. Expect the unusual favor of God. And we looked at a few examples. We looked at uh, Daniel and we looked at Nehemiah as well, right? And how, you know, they didn't know what was ahead. Right. They, they probably uh, thinking, oh man, what, what, what is ahead, right? Uh, but we see that they there was ex there was unusual favor upon them, and the same unusual favor, the divine favor of God, can be upon each one of us, right? Even as we plan, prepare, and look to God, right? So we'll move into the next point of the same chapter. Uh, the next point, uh, you can please uh, you can check your notes. Uh, please have your notes open so you can track along as well. Uh, the next point is you can build only after you settle down. Stop wandering. Let's read this. Proverbs 27 and verse 8. People who won't settle down, wandering hither and yon, are like restless birds flitting to and fro. Now, there is something called as transitions, right? And usually, uh, when you look at transitions, it happens over a period of four to five years, right? Uh, because four to five years is a good time to learn, to develop, to uh, develop our skills, uh, to grow, to uh, you know, to contribute to the organization. Now, transitions are important, but you must remember that transitions must be done at the right time. Right. So, for example, you're working in a company, you're working in an organization, um, and it's been a year there. Right. Uh, sometimes you feel, oh, or, you know, this is not what I want to do, and immediately we want to transition to something else. Now, yes, there are times that can happen, but always remember a transition phase is always four to five years because that helps you to learn about. What you're doing right develop yourself grow make a meaningful contribution right now if we keep moving from one place to another very quickly what happens this verse says it very uh, very clearly people who don't who won't settle down wandering and hither and yon which means which are just wandering everywhere are like restless birds 
right? It's like, uh, you know, restless birds don't build a nest, don't lay eggs, and don't have young ones. Why? Because they don't want to build a nest. They always want to go flying here and there. They want to do this. They want to go here. They want to do that. They want to, uh, you know, look at different options. So they don't establish themselves. And what happens when we don't establish ourselves? We are unproductive and we cannot multiply. We cannot increase. Right? So very important. Resist that temptation of moving very quickly or transitioning very quickly. Right? Many times, you know, uh, I, I've got the opportunity to speak to many youth. And I remember many, many years back, there was this young man who came up to me and he said, uh, please pray for me, Pastor. I want to get a good job. I knew that he was already working. So I asked him, hey, I thought you were already working. You were working in the IT sector. Oh, no, I quit that job. I said, what happened? Why did you quit? I mean, you know, you're just a fresher. Just got the job. It was probably eight months that he worked. I asked him, what happened? He said, his boss shouted at him. So I asked him, why did your boss shout at you? Uh, no, because I took an extended break. And so because his boss shouted at him, he quit his job. And uh, I, I didn't know what to say because uh, as a pastor, you know, we need to give good advice. We need to encourage uh, our, our, you know, our church folks. And I told him, but that day I remember telling him, you know, we need to make right decisions at the right time. Don't make decisions in your anger. Don't make decisions out of emotions. And, you know, he really had a tough time getting a job. He got a job after some time. And the job was a very less paying job. He had to take it. He had no choice. And, you know, I remember he kept telling me, you know, I regret what I did because that company was a very good company. It had a lot of benefits. They would, uh, you know, they were willing to, you know, also, uh, uh, you know, take me to places. Uh, they were willing to make me into a trainer, but I just quit. Right. So remember that we are running a life plan and we're not running a rat race. What we're doing is we're, we have a life plan. Right. So try to stick on to places at least for four or five years. Right. Now, there will be times when you feel that God is really putting in your heart to move into this company and you feel that it's the right time. You can go ahead right now. Don't don't say, no, no, my transition has to be four or five years. So I've only finished two years. So then I should not. No, it's not a set rule. Uh, that's why praying and stepping into what God has for us is very important. Right. Prayerfully do these transitions. Now, in your professional career, we have grace, we have gifts, we have skills. We must sharpen our skills, right? So if you look at an axe, the axe head needs to be sharp, right? Now, if the, if the axe head is not sharp, I can keep hitting the tree trunk and nothing is going to happen. It still looks like an axe, but it's not doing the work of an axe, right? Because the edge is not sharp. Now, you and I, as believers, the worst thing to do, if we want to be, and we want to grow in our walk with God, we need to sharpen our edge, learn new things, build your strengths, expand your skills. Right now, it could be you know, something that is as simple as getting more, you know, tech savvy. Uh, and I shared this before. You no, know, I, I was not really a very, uh, I'm not very tech savvy because I was, you know, the the my line of work was more into people, right? I was in learning and development, so it was more about developing people, their character, their lifestyle, how to talk, how to speak. That was what I was doing in my workplace. So I spent very little time on computers and laptops and all of that. You know, I, yeah. so over time I realized that hey. If I want to, you know, in ministry as well, if I want to do some things and, and want to sharpen my edge, I need to learn. Right? I need to develop my skills. And uh, 
uh, I remember early 2014, I guess it was 14 or 15, I think it's 14, uh, where the Power to Change campaign had uh, started. Uh, it was a global campaign. I'm not sure if it was there in other countries. I know it was there in other countries as well. It was a huge campaign. And uh, I got the opportunity to be part of the team uh, in Power to Change. Like APC, we were doing, you know, we were partnering with uh, Power to Change to, you know, to just uh, uh, be an, impact the city of Bangalore. And, uh, and, I, and I knew that, okay, so when I got the opportunity, I remember, you know, they said, all the data will come on an Excel sheet. All you need to do is, you know, uh, use these shortcuts and add it into another database. And I was like, oh, God, you know, uh, uh, there's so many things that I have to do. And this is all like you know, technical stuff. But I, I thank God for, this op for that opportunity because it was during that phase, 14, 15, uh, that I really learned a lot of technicals. I remember we, I would go and sit uh, in office. I would sit next to the IT company. IT, uh, the head of IT here in our office, and I would keep asking him questions, keep doing, you know, what is this, what is that, what is this? Uh, and I'm grateful to God because it helped me to build my strength, to sharpen my skills. So even as you are in a place, uh, don't feel that, hey, I'm not growing. And now when we look at what's happening around us, we have so much of material There's there's media, there's books that we can get that, you know, to just increase and build ourselves, right? So use all of that. Don't look at that period, oh, man, I'm just in the same job, doing the same thing. Sharpen your skills. Keep building yourself, right? Um, now I just want to give you this example, you know. I, I, I still uh, uh, take up these, you know, talkings. Uh, these, you know, I, I think you'll find them on YouTube where they, uh, how to talk professionally and these TED Talks where they have, you know, 20 minutes of, you know, how to talk, uh, how to become a good orator, how to uh, do uh, public speeches. I still listen to all that. I still listen to a lot of these things, right? A lot of vocabulary um, uh, that I, I like to read and learn. And why do we do that? Because I know that I'm going to be preaching in front of people. Now, the people that I'm preaching in front of, maybe heads of companies, managing directors and all of that, right? So I need to sharpen my skill. I can't say, hey, I'm the preacher. You listen to me. No, I need to grow. Next point, take stock of things frequently and review, revise, and refine. I love this verse. Right? Uh, Proverbs 4.26 ponder the path of your feet and let your ways be established what a powerful verse ponder that means think about it think about what step you're taking why you're taking it how you're going to take it and and you know also uh, if i take this what must i do i take this step right now Think about it in your professional career, in your in your ministry, or whatever you plan, in your own business that you want to start, you have to ponder your steps. Take stock of things. Think, pause, reflect on how things are going in your professional life. And I was just talking to a couple of uh, folks, church folks, and, and as I was talking, I was saying, hey man, it's been it's been so many years that I've been in APC. And I keep thinking, God, thank you. Thank you for these wonderful opportunities that I got over all these years. So I, I pause, I reflect back. Every now, it usually happens in the first month of every year. We pause and reflect back. But for me, it's April, May, because that March, April, somewhere around that time is when I joined uh, full-time ministry many years back. So every time this March, April, I, I I take stock of things. I stop and I reflect, I review. Uh, uh, and so sometimes, you know, we make a plan. Uh, and it's good when we see that, okay, we're, you know, working towards that plan. But sometimes you may feel, God, I'm, I'm at a dead end. I don't see any progress. It's all right. It's all right. Uh, review back. 
revise your plan. Right? So the Lord may say, you know what, uh, you, you change this. Remove this from your plan, add this into your plan. Or you, you can, you know, God may lead you to refine your plan. Right? Uh, and I always say this, you know, uh, I never planned that I would, uh, you know, I always thought I would, you know, I'll be in Bangalore, but I never thought I'll go to Bangalore. I never thought of it. It was not even in my radar, I would say. Right? I, I, I never thought of it. I never thought of going to another city because I've, I've been born and brought up here. And this is where I always thought I'm going to be. But when the opportunity came, I didn't have it in my 10 year plan. My 10 year plan didn't have Bangalore. But I realized that, hey, it is fulfilling some of the purposes that I have. Only thing, the place, the geographical location is different, right? So I had to review, I had to refine and revise certain things in that 10 year plan, right? So there will be new areas of grace that God will give you. There will be new opportunities that God will open. Now, ponder the paths you take. And every step that you take, be firm and well thought of. Right? Very important. Because a wrong step can completely alter the course of events in your life. Right? And, and I can give you some examples. You know, there are many, sometimes people, you know, they call us, they say, you know, my marriage is falling apart. And I you know, asked them, what happened? What, what, what is it? What, what's wrong? And they, they begin to share. They say, you know what? Before marriage, I love this girl or I love this guy. But we are from different faiths. But he or she promised me that after we become get married, they'll become a believer. They will come to church with me. But after marriage, they completely changed. They said, no, I'm not coming to church. There was pressure from their from the their parents saying, "How can you go to church?" And now what's happening is they've got a you know an idol and put it at home. So this is just an example, right? This has happened. Uh, the father, you know, is a goes to church. The husband goes to church is a believer, and the mother or the wife is at home praying at home to another god. And the children are completely confused what's happening. And there's friction between families. And obviously, where there's friction, it, it's going to just increase. He doesn't want to do what she says. She doesn't want to do what he says. And it's just maybe three, four years into marriage. And he's, and the person, and you know, many times they say, I made a mistake. I knew. This is not right in the eyes of God, but emotions, right? Emotions. Oh, I love this person. So not well thought of. Right? Ponder, stay firm on what decision you take. Right? Uh, uh, because it can really alter. Everything can change just by one decision that can go wrong. Right? So be open to revising or you know, reviewing, refining your plans. Uh, you make the plan, have it open. Let God make you know, those changes here whenever he has to. Next point. Uh, feel free to stop me if you have any questions, right? Uh, I'll just keep going. Uh, next point. To grow, you need to change, right? There's this thing, right? Uh, change is always constant. Let's read 1 Corinthians 13, 11. When I was a child, I spoke as a child. I understood as a child, and I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. Paul is writing to the Corinthians, and uh, 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 you know the church in Corinth is flowing in the gifts. They have, they have, they have wonderful, uh, you know, uh, they, have, they have a prophetic, or word of knowledge, they were flowing all these gifts, but they were immature in their thinking. There was division, there was strife, there was, uh, 
you know, they were taking partaking in the Lord's table in an unworthy manner. Uh, there was groupism. They they were questioning the Apostle Paul. Why are you telling us what to do? Now, were they flowing in the gifts? Yes. Were they speaking in tongues and you know, uh, uh, you know, just uh, flowing in healing and deliverance? Yes, everything wonderful was happening in the church, but in their mind, their spirit was immature. They had not yet put away the childish things. Growth happens through a process of change. Second Corinthians three eighteen says, "We are changed from glory to glory." What we were, we were 10 years back or five years back, we should not be the same right now. We must have grown. We must have at least, you know, matured in our thinking, right? Maturity is simply growing up that happens through change. And sometimes maturity happens through situations. We go through situations or we go through the consequences of our decisions. I should not have done it, or I thank God I did this. Uh, and maturity comes in, right? So in our profession, uh, in our ministry, we need to be mature. We can have gifts and the, you know, the Holy Spirit, the anointing, and all of that, and still be immature. We need to grow in maturity. Uh, now, some of these changes that we need uh, may be simple as and easy. Uh, if you look at your notes, it's there. It's as simple as building further on your strength, which is growing in maturity. Uh, you know, sometimes these changes may be significant, right? Which is, you know, important changes. Changes may be things you anticipated and are intentional about. Some changes just come up unexpectedly. Learn to take change in stride. Enjoy the seasons of change. Uh, uh, sometimes these seasons of change, they may not be stability, they may, may not be certainty. Uh, but as, as long as you're moving forward, go with it, enjoy it. Right? And, uh, uh, you know, I always think about this. This may not be a, uh, the best example, but this is the first thing that comes to my mind. Uh, you know, when I was 27, I had my first son, my first child, 27 years old. I had no idea. But how do I look after kids? Like all my life, I was like, you know, just this boy who had, you know, just, just out there, you know, doing all things and um, freedom. 27, I had my first son, I had no idea what to do. And my parents were there, but you know, it, everything changes. I thought to myself, oh man, I've just stepped into ministry. I was 25 old when I, you know, began to work, and uh, 23 when I started, you know, sharing the gospel and re reaching out and just uh, going to these small meetings, 25 when um uh, began to uh, take Bible college uh, lessons and all of that. And and so at a very young age, uh, I enjoyed my Bible college season. But uh, after that, I got married, got a child. And I was like, oh, man, uh, I have no idea what to do. You know, and babies are crying. Sometimes I, I, I don't know why they're crying. And they're just crying the whole night. Uh, and I remember thinking to myself, God, what is this? I thought to myself, man, I just got into ministry. You know, all these questions would come up. Man, is it too early to have a child? Why? Or, or how am I going to manage this? And will God give me opportunities? Everyone is seeing me. I'm carrying a baby and walking around. Where will I preach? When will I preach? When will I read worship? All these questions are coming. And, uh, I said, man, I, I think I have to wait another four years. So it even came to my mind that I, I take a break, let the kids grow up, maybe till they're about five years old, and then join back ministry. And I remember God just saying to me, it is a season. It is a season, right? That was a season you 
you are a youth and now you are a family man you may be young but you are a family man so you gotta you gotta look after the child and doing that i learned so much i, I can tell you you know i learned how to be patient i learned how to uh you know uh just stretch myself i learned how to be kind i learned how to answer questions because when they grow up they ask questions and and now when i look back i thank god for that season was it difficult very difficult but did i learn something yes a lot i learned so much and now you know I, when i see families uh, couples with small babies i think to myself oh god thank you kids are grown up finally they grown up and now they you know but i'm grateful to god uh, and and you know i i thank god for those times and i thank god that i enjoyed those seasons was it difficult yes but i enjoyed it so to grow we need change and we need to take what is what is coming our way right uh, of course we plan through things but even as we plan uh, we need to be willing to you know change and i hope that uh, you know uh, example made sense basically what i'm saying is you know we there will come a time right uh, even now when i look at some families you know the kids are grown up and they tell me you know hey you know what you be with your kids enjoy time with your children because once they you know reach 8th 9th or 10th grade they are not going to come near you and start talking to you they they will have their friends they will be busy so now is the time when you have to sow into their lives right and so i know this is a different kind of a season no more changing diapers but it's a different season i got to speak into their lives i got to equip them i got to uh, reach them into what god has for them know their gifts build their gifts right we got to speak into their lives and then there'll come a time as they grow into teens and youth uh there will be different seasons for us right so enjoy each season is what i'm saying right now as you're going through the journey look for clarity right don't be in a place where okay god is a god who will you know only give us nuggets of what's going to happen he will not tell us exactly what will happen no you and i can pray for clarity the spirit of god is the spirit who reveals the deepest secrets of god the deepest things of god can be revealed right so we can never come to a place where saying uh you know no uh god i'm living in this you know this place where everything is a mystery and and, and i just need to walk in that mystery and suddenly god will uh, lead me no look for clarity ask god what you want to right ask god god give me clarity on what i must do what i must say uh, and what what is my next step as we get proverbs 418 but the path of the just is like the shining sun that shines ever brighter into the uh, unto the perfect day right the path of the just is like shining sun bringing clarity bringing clearness bringing light right so things may be unclear initially but over time right we, first we may not know the why we may not know the what we may not know the where the when the how we may not have all these answers but what we do have is we can ask the holy spirit to bring clarity and many times when we have to take a decision god can just give you the right decision at the right time he may tell you do this in your spirit or he may give you a word right many times many many times you know i've been uh, i may have been talking to people the holy spirit has said stop stop talking and just move out of there many times it has happened many times the holy spirit has said tell this person to do this or even for my own person you know he said the holy spirit has said you do this 
write this email or go to this person and speak to him and tell him this is what, or him or her, this is what you must do. And so it was very clear. It's as if it's, uh, you know, you're, 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 you're seeing it written in, in paper. So clear, right? So praying and seeking God through these seasons, you and I can ask God for clarity, right? Ask God. God, give me clarity. Look at Apostle Paul. I, I, I love what he says. He had exact, he knew exactly what was going to happen. He asked God. Remember, he's going to Rome. The book of Acts, his final journey. What is it? The angel of the Lord came and told me, as long as you're on this boat, nothing is going to, everyone is going to live. And but the boat will be, the ship will be shipwrecked. And we will land on an island called Malta. And we will be there. Exactly, clarity, clear. Because God told me that I will go to Rome, I will reach Rome, I will testify. So Apostle Paul was not afraid, oh, what if I die in the sea? No, he knew it. There was clarity. I have to stand in front of Caesar. Right? And, and so even in our seasons of life, we can ask God, give me the clarity. Right? He can give you a word, he can give you a vision, he can give you... Uh, a prophetic word to somebody else. Of course, we, you know, do what we have to do. Meaning, we authenticate. We uh, we ask the Holy Spirit, when it, especially when it's a prophecy, right? You look whether it's in line with God's word, whether it's in line with what you were want to do, and all of that. Uh, but God can release those things through us, right? Next point: avoid the donkey and the horse syndrome, right? Psalms 32 and verse 8 and 9. I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will guide you with my eye. Do not be like the horse or the mule which have no understanding, which must be harnessed with bit and bridle, else they will not come near you. Now, God has instructed us that he will guide us, he will teach us, he will watch over us. Plenty of verses, Psalms and Isaiah, the New Testament, Plenty, plenty, plenty of verses, right? Now, God also tells us, don't be like the donkey or don't be like the horse. Now, let's look at this. A donkey can be stubborn. You, you keep pulling a donkey. Come on, you need to go. But the donkey is not moving, not willing to move at all. It's there stuck in that same place. Very reluctant, refusing to move. And the horse can be get so excited or get so, uh, you know, on the uh, uh, activated or energized that it it runs ahead, right? So uh, even as the trainer tries to stop it, it may not stop, or or the horse is just, you know, just running ahead of things. Very hard to handle it, right? Now. God is saying, don't be like the donkey where you refuse to move. I'm opening the door. You're not going in. All you're doing is sitting and praying, sitting and asking God, but I'm opening the door. You're not going. Don't be stubborn. Or don't be like the horse. I'm in a hurry. You, you know, we may take decisions, go ahead of what God is doing. God is saying, wait, I'm going to open the right door for you. No, 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 God, I'm in a hurry. No. Now, now, this can happen in anything, right? Anything. Uh, it could be in, uh, in terms of career, in terms of, you know, uh, uh, buying something. You know, there they could be, you know, I remember this. Uh, this is uh, families that I know of, right? Um, and they were sharing with me, right? They were saying, uh, you know, I'm in a huge debt. So what happened? Um, I bought this big house. And uh, and now I have this huge loan upon me. And it looks like I'm going to be paying this loan for the next 20 odd years. I asked them, what, what happened? How, how did, did you not plan your finances? So we planned. We were going to go for a two bedroom house. But what happened was we saw this wonderful house in the heart of the city. It was a duplex. 
which was a four bedroom house. It was wonderful. It had car parking. Everything was. And we thought, okay, this will be a wonderful thing. We went and purchased it. Right? And now I realize that, hey, I'm going to be paying a loan for 20 years, and the interest rates are just going up and up. And they were very upset. They were very distraught and had made this decision. And, uh, and they were asking me, well, what do we do? You know, how do I get, get, what do I do? What must I do? And the first thing that came to my mind was the horse syndrome. Because sometimes we jump into things and then regret later. Right? Uh, and that's why I love that verse. Ponder the path of your feet. Think about it. Think ahead. You know, thinking, planning ahead is very, uh, look at Jesus. He planned ahead. Right? He, he didn't jump into things initially. He planned. He planned what must I do, when must I do it. Right? So don't be like the horse running off ahead of what God has in another direction. Or don't be like the, the donkey not going, not taking the step, but just staying in one place. Right? Just be in sync with God. If He's not saying anything, continue to do what you're doing. Right? That means God wants you to do what you do. Just keep doing it. Right? Psalms 25 verse 12 says, Who is the man that fears the Lord? Him shall he teach in the way he chooses. Right? Look at, let's look at the next point. Your steps are ordered by the Lord. Psalms 37 verse 23 and 24. Wonderful verse. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord and he delights in his ways. Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down, for the Lord upholds him in his hand. You know, there was this, uh, as a young, uh, you know, we used to go to these vacation Bible school as kids. And this, there was a song on this, uh, the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord and he delights in his ways. Though he falls, though he falls, he shall not be cast down, for the Lord upholds him in his hand. I really love that verse. Something intriguing about this verse. The steps of a good man are ordered by God. That means God will tell you, take the next step. It is God who's saying, don't take the step. You know, and the picture that was always there in my mind as a little boy was, you know, during those days uh, when it rained uh, during the uh, monsoon seasons, uh, you know, uh, it would all be slushy and wet everywhere and uh, I remember going to school and the whole ground the you know, the playground would be slushy full of uh, you know mud puddles everywhere and uh, not a nice sight but I remember my dad would always come to pick us up from school and he would say he would he would take us through those wet places and he would say okay put your foot here now you jump in and you come that you know you come into the other side then you, and he would purposely do that. He would purposely take us through these slushes. He would put bricks here, stones here and there. And he would say, you know, okay, jump here, jump here. And for us, it was more of a game, you know, just to make us happy. But but I realized that, you know, every time I read this verse, I think of that. A father directing the steps of a son. Steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. And every time my dad would put those you know stones or those uh, bricks i'll be so happy oh man thank thank god i can jump and no more i can i don't have to go into this puddle and my shoes could become all wet and dirty i i'll be so happy and once we cross that whole you know that whole slushy muddy puddles and i'll be so happy I'll say oh man my dad helped me cross this this, you know, this whole place. And, uh, I would tell my brothers, look, my shoes are all clean and uh, yeah, Dad helped me to cross. It's such a joy. And our Heavenly Father directs our steps. He may put stones, He may put leaves, He may put things in our way to help us cross over. Even if you make a mistake, even if you fall, the Lord will uphold us with his righteous right hand. If we feel we've taken a wrong step, 
if turned the wrong way, he can still, he's bigger than our mistakes, he can still make a way out for us. And so maybe some of us are here. We, you know, we've we've made a decision, it's it's gone the wrong way. We may be facing the consequences of the situation. Don't feel guilty to go back to God. You can always go back to God and say, God, I've messed up, but I'm putting the situation into your hands. Can you please help me fix it? Can you please direct my paths? He will uphold us with his righteous right hand. Right? Next point is trust God even when you can't figure out everything. Right? Over this life's journey, we will not be able to figure out everything. Yes, we ask God for clarity, but there are some things we cannot figure out. We cannot understand why this is happening. Right? Let's read Proverbs 3, 5 and 6. Trust God from the bottom of your heart. Don't try to figure out everything on your own. Listen for God's voice in everything that you do, <clears throat> everywhere you go. He is the one who will keep you on track. Always love the message translation. Trust God from the bottom of your heart and don't try to figure out everything on your own. What happens when we try to figure out everything on our own? We'll end up stressed. We'll end up doubtful. Maybe there's fear, there's, there's you know, uh, questions. Just trust God. Don't try to figure out everything on your own. And when we look at the Bible, we look at the Old Testament especially, how they put their trust in God. You know, how these wonderful men and women of God, it did not make sense at all. Really did not make sense. Imagine telling Joshua, you know, God telling Joshua, Joshua, you just go around that wall of Jericho seven times, and on the seventh time, blow your trumpets and praise God, the wall is going to fall. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. I can imagine Joshua saying, Are you serious, God? You know, that wall is, you know, probably 30, 40 feet. It's, it's so wide. Uh, how? Trust God. Look okay. at, uh, you know, Elijah, Elijah, you go into the brooks, go and be there. I'm going to send the ravens to send you food. And I can only imagine Elijah saying, ravens are going to bring me food. What are they going to bring me? Worms. Right? Uh, but sometimes you just need to trust God. He will provide. Right? Look at David. Look at Daniel, Jeremiah, all these wonderful men and women, men of God, men, women of God as well. Right? Trust God even when we can't figure out. Things can change. Sometimes transitions happen unexpectedly. Sometimes things change in the organization unexpectedly, unexpectedly. Uh, uh, in spite of all the planning we do, we must always rely on the Lord and continuously walk by faith. Plan. Do all the planning. Trust in the Lord. Walk in faith. Our planning and preparation is an expression of our stewardship towards God. So we're saying, God, God, I'm not just living arbitrarily. I have a plan. I have a purpose. And here it is. Uh, but God, I trust you for where you're going to take me and what you're going to do. Right. Uh, it is us responding with gratitude and sincerity to what has been entrusted to us. So maybe God is telling us, you know, maybe some of us, God may say, you know, I'm going to make you start your own business. I'm going to grow that business. Or I'm going to make you start your own ministry. Uh, and this ministry is going to bless your life. Right? You're going to impact many, many youth and families and many lives are going to be touched. But right now, you may be just somebody very insignificant. Trust God. He can do it for you. I can only imagine David's brothers. Right? David's brothers are all standing there. Oh, man. 
I'm going to be the next king of Israel, or is it going to be me? Uh, you know, I've got all the uh, you know qualities required for a to be a king. And God says, no, no, no. David, you are going to be king. He he didn't figure out how things are going to work out, but he began to trust God. Same thing with you know uh, the apostle Paul. That same thing with all these wonderful men and women. Imagine Peter. Peter, the Lord Jesus meets him after his resurrection, tells Peter, Peter, you are going to lead the church. Can you imagine, Peter? I'm going to lead the church. You want me to do this? I'm the one who denied you. I'm the one who uh, who talks ahead of thinking. Before thinking, I talk. I talk and then think. And, and I betrayed you. I... Uh, I'm just a fisherman. I'm not well learned. You're telling me to do this, right? And I love how he, you know, everything changes because he begins to trust God, right? So always remain focused on the Lord. Keep trusting. Keep listening. Be prepared for what is ahead. Delight yourself in the Lord, right? Uh, every step you take matters, and. Whatever step you take, commit to that step. Right? Commit to what you're doing. If you're there doing something, be fully in it. Right? Finally, last point. Step up to your mountain. Now, and we know that you know there are uh, there are seven spheres of influence or seven mountains in our society. And one is family, institution set up by God, religion includes the church, the people of God, education, which is schools, colleges, academics, universities, media, uh, electronic, print and electronic, newspaper, TV, internet. Uh, then you've got arts and entertainment, uh, business, and then government. So these are basically the seven spheres of influence which cover almost all spheres of, of society. Right. Now, step up to your mountain. For example, for me personally, my mountain is religion. I would say my mountain is also family, right? Uh, because that's what God has set up for me. So I know, okay, God, help me to be, you know, to raise up a good family, the ways of the Lord, children, and also the sphere of religion, of 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 just ministering to people, being part of full-time ministry, help me to do, help me to grow in this sphere. Right? So you can choose you, whatever God has called you for. Maybe some of them God has called you in the media team or business, or some of you are in judicial system, in the government, working in the government, uh, arts and entertainment. So some could be footballers or tennis players. Do it for the glory of God. Right? So step up to your mountain. Take what God has called, called you for. Right, uh, And within this, there are plenty of subgroups that you can be working in. Now, the point of this seven spheres is just for our understanding. Now, doesn't mean that we, you know, uh, we keep thinking, oh, I'm in the sphere of religion or I'm in the sphere of education. So this is what, no, categorizing it is not important. What, what? what you are doing, what God has called you for, step up in that, right? And on every mountain, remember, there are giants. Conquer your giants, you know, that is the word of the Lord for 2022. There are challenges, there are giants, so don't shy away, don't be afraid, don't run away, prepare yourself, put on the armor of God, fight the good fight of faith, overcome, and conquer the mountain which God has given you. Right? The Lord will be with us. Uh, he has promised us. Right? Uh, don't look at those giants and say, oh man, how am I going to bring these giants down? How am I going to solve these problems? No. Look at God who is leading you. Okay? So we'll close with chapter 2. Next week, sorry, not next week, this Wednesday, we'll pick up from chapter 3, Right Workplace Attitudes. Um, 
Yes, Divya's got a question. We can just quickly answer that. How can a person come to a decision if there is lack of clarity? For example, if taking up a course in a university where there is a lot at stake and there is also time constraint, what is the good course of action? Yeah, that's a good question, Divya. Uh, what I would say is take time. Right? If there is no clarity, uh, it's okay for your passers by. Right? But don't step into things where you feel that this is not the right time. Right now, now, for example, there's you want to do your master's in I don't know engineering, right? But right now you're working, for example, right? You're working. You want to do your master's in engineering. Good. Leave it up to God. Open it. Ask God for clarity. Maybe it's a year. Nothing has come. God has not spoken. Continue on what you are doing. Continue to do your research. Continue to you know look out for colleges or if you've already you know, uh, chosen a college, continue to pray, ask God, God, lead me, when should I do this? Because as you're saying, as you said, it's it, it, it it's a lot on stake. You'll have to leave your job and you have to get into this uh, course and it's going to be a two-year course. How are you going to manage, right? So in the meanwhile, like I shared last week, you can do the practical steps, right? Now, what if I'm praying, God, help me to get into this university, you know the fees is probably about five lakhs. And you know that you'll be studying for two, two years and you'll need these ex extra expenses, you'll need money. So what, 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 what must you do? Practical things. Begin to save up money. right? And what if God tells you after two years, okay, now is the time, get into the university. And then saying, oh man, what should I do next? Uh, I need money for this anyway. No, you prepare. You're sorted. Okay. Even if I have to take an education loan, this is how I'm going to take it. This is how I'm going to repay it. Uh, this is the amount that I have saved up. This is what I'm going to use uh, for my hostels and I stay. Everything is planned out. It may have taken two years for us to do that. But it's okay. Uh, we're not being like the horse, taking a decision very quickly. Maybe I hope that it, that answers your question. All right, I think uh, it's time, so yeah, you may have to get to your next class. Thank you so much. Uh, we'll meet on Wednesday and continue from Chapter 3. All right. God bless. Have a great day ahead. Thank, Thank you so you much. Sir. God bless. Thank you.